These are the 25 most absurd fouls in football history. And first, the foul that was committed by one of the nicest guys in football. It was a matchup between Everton and Spurs during the 2019 season. And in the 78th minute, Sun caused one of the most painful injuries imaginable. He tried to reach the ball, but it was too late and hit Gomez's ankle, completely turning it the other way. Players started to panic, and fans that watched it up close were shocked. Sun received a red card and was absolutely heartbroken. Obviously, that foul was unintentional, but the top three has some crazy revenge moments that are a lot more brutal. But first, an amateur player from this tiny country almost chopped off Goretzka's head. It was in the group stage of the World Cup 2022 qualifiers, Germany versus Liechtenstein, and only eight minutes into the game. A uh, high challenge there. Yeah, this random guy who plays for an amateur club in Switzerland almost broke the jaw of one of Bayern's best midfielders of all time. I'm glad Germany butchered them 9-0. Dude should go back to playing in his crappy little stadium and leave the pros to it. But even they can lose control sometimes. Because what Francesco Totti did to Mario Balotelli didn't only send him off. It also got him a four-match ban. It was the 2010 Coppa Italia final, Rome versus Inter. A then 19-year-old Super Mario was dominating the Italian fields and driving opponents crazy. So 1-0 down with a trophy at stake and less than three minutes left to play, Totti lost it. Cerca di guadagnare il fondo, prova a passare in mezzo a tre, messo giù, punizione, cartellino in mano e ammonizione per Totti che è espulso. In mezzo a due lui passa. Bruh, even the fireman was like, what the f***? And the crazy thing is, Totti later admitted it was intentional and he wanted to hurt Balotelli for insulting him for years. And I guess De Jong held a grudge against Xavi Alonso for some reason. Oh man, that kung fu kick never gets old. Crazy to think that he only got a yellow for it. Which can't be said about Sergio Aguero, because after a 1-3 beating in his own stadium, he went leg first and flew straight through David Luiz. The horror tackle got Aguero a four-match ban, and Luiz later claimed to have suffered two years years from the reckless challenge. But that's not even the worst foul ever committed on a Chelsea player. Because John Terry almost died on the pitch. The Blues and Arsenal went head-to-head -head in the 2007 League Cup Final. With the game tied up and only a few minutes on the clock, Chelsea was given a corner and Terry... They haven't cleared it on! Oh. Diaby wanted to clear the goal and Terry tried heading it in. Not the best idea. He swallowed his tongue, couldn't breathe, and had to be treated on the field. The entire stadium was speechless. Mourinho thought he lost his captain and Diaby was praying right next to him. Luckily, he fully recovered, but the kick to his face was so hard, he doesn't remember anything from the incident. But everyone remembers this ridiculous tackle on Messi. This ain't no NFL. I guess some players tend to forget that. I thought me and my friends only did that stuff to each other in FIFA. I feel bad for Murata though. But I even feel worse for Gavi, who almost lost his ear during a game versus Osasuna. Unfortunately, I can't really show the foul because he was bleeding too much. But the 19-year-old needed medical treatment on the pitch and got his ear stitched up. Which looks painful. And so does number 16. Because during a game between Ajax and Bayern, Thomas Muller tried recreating the karate kid. As he was stretching his leg to reach a long ball, he hit Nico Taglifico straight in the head with his studs, requiring the Argentinian left back to continue the rest of the game with staples in his head to stop the bleeding. Muller watched the rest of the game from the dressing room and got a two-game ban for his sickening foul. But that's nothing compared to Kevin Muscat's tackle that got him banned for eight weeks. Getting past Brebner. Muscat, he's off again. A second straight red card for Kevin Muscat, and he didn't even see a second yellow. It's a straight red. The up and under, he's gone way over the ball. That is dangerous for Musket. And Adrian Zahar was definitely hurt. He needed surgery on his knee and wouldn't play football for a whole year. Many Australians even claim the incident tarnished his career, which was almost the case for Aaron Ramsey as well. February 27, 2010, Stoke City versus Arsenal. The build-up to this match was really intense because both managers made it very obvious they hated each other. But nobody expected that day to turn into a horror scene when Ryan Shawcross went in ruthlessly and snapped Ramsey's leg into pieces. One player stated, I heard the crack of Ramsey's leg from the bench. I heard the screaming. Shawcross was immediately sent off and got a three-match ban. 
The entire Arsenal staff was concerned that the 19-year-old would never play professional football again. But luckily, he made a comeback nine months later and played seven more seasons for the Gunners. And let's just say that karma came around for Shawcross, because after he'd stated that the injury he caused Ramsey never affected him, he found himself in a familiar situation in 2019. Chasing the ball back, gets a challenge, and oh, oh! Ooh. He broke his own calf bone and was ruled out for four months. And at number 12, this player from Honduras didn't injure one, but two players at the same time. Vamos a ver qué pasó con Andrés Orellana. Ahí va. No, no, no puede no, ser. No. Pero esto no solo es para rojo. Es, es inconcebible es que extra. un futbolista pueda hacer esto. No, no, extraño en Orellana. Es el muy profesional. Luckily, he got sent off. And so was Trigueros. This heavy challenge on Barcelona captain Lionel Messi meant that Trigueros was shown a straight red card. Dude almost broke the goat's ankle. Now I understand why he has his legs insured for $750 million. And with that, we've made it to the top 10. So only the most brutal fouls from here. Just wait until we get to the top three. Starting off with this vicious kick to the face. Dude clearly aimed for his head. And Paulista aimed for Vinicius' ankles. No wonder he was banned for two games. But this dude should be banned from the Sunday League. And at number seven, we got another dude trying to smash Messi's ankle. At least Lopez later denied intentionally stomping on it. Otherwise, he would have been in trouble for sure. And talking about trouble. Oh, but uh, that's the challenge. It's certainly late. Well, it's reckless. That outrageous foul on Diaby's ankle resulted in three different surgeries and an eight-month recovery period. But he never really got over it, because the French midfielder eventually spent 1,747 days off the pitch, which is almost five years, making him the record holder for having missed more playtime than any other football player in the world. Someone who walked a similar path is Jesse Rodriguez, because the kid who was once considered the next Cristiano Ronaldo got his career completely ruined in 2014. As he ran toward the corner flag, he got hit by Kolasinac, who then fell onto his knee. Looking at his face, it was obvious things were serious. His interior cruciate ligament was torn to pieces, and he was sidelined for nine months. After that, he was never the same again and transferred to one club to the other. Now plays for Los Palmas in the second Spanish league, but at least he wasn't as close to having his foot amputated. Cisse. Trying to brush off McEvely. Down they both go. Now at first it doesn't look like much happened, but if you look at the replay from this angle, ah, that's just painful to watch. He broke his leg and was on the sidelines for 10 months, but things could have played out a whole lot worse according to his doctor. Your blood circulation at your foot was irrigated. After 30 minutes to an hour, it would have to be amputated. And with that, we made it to the top three of the dirtiest fouls in football history. For number three, we gotta go back to the 14th of October, 2006. Reading versus Chelsea. After only 20 seconds played, Peter Cech was hit in the face by Stefan Hunt, resulting in one of the most horrific moments in football. The goalie injured his skull, couldn't play for two months, and wore his iconic headband for the rest of his career. Obviously, Hunt was devastated that he caused an injury so severe, but at number two, Zlatan was out for revenge. Together with Juventus, he went up against Inter, and all he wanted was to find the net. But all Marco Materazzi wanted was to kick him out of the game. La discesa di Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic, contrastato. Zlatan was struggling to walk after that, but he wasn't going to go without a fight. He had to get his revenge, but he never got it that game because his manager subbed him off in case he would do something stupid. But Slatan never forgot about that moment and wanted his payback. So when they came face to face again a couple years later, Ibra knew what he had to do, but Marco beat him to it. Yeah, Slatan could have believed what just hit him. All right, okay, the tone was set. So as soon as he got close to him, Oh my god. That kick to the chest, an elbow to the face, put Marco in the hospital. But our number one most brutal foul almost ended someone's life. To understand the rivalry between these two, we need to go back to 1997. Alfie was playing as a right back at Leeds, and Roy Keane was one of United's best midfielders at the time. As Keane was going for goal, Holland stopped him, causing him to hit the ground and scream to get medical attention. Holland Sr. thought Keane was faking an injury to get a penalty, so he stood over him screaming to get up. But what he didn't know is that Keane actually tore his ACL. 
Keen missed the rest of the season and never forgot about what happened that moment. So when the two clashed again four years later in April of 2001, Keen was out for revenge. Oh, Roy Keen on Holland. It's a red card issued by David Ellery to Manchester United's captain for the fourth time. He was immediately sent off, fined 5,000 pounds, and suspended for three games. But one year later, when the Irishman admitted in his 2002 biography that the foul had been premeditated, I had waited long enough. I f***ing hit him hard. The ball was there, I think. Take that, you cunt, and don't ever stand over me sneering about fake injuries. He writes, That is just ridiculous, man. And so are these moments. Click that video right here.